Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about Pine Research along with its implementation and common errors that people make while implementing Pine Research. Let us begin with an introduction to what Pine Research is. Pine Research allows us to find an element in a sorted array. Let us say we are given an array A which is 1, 8, 21, 32, 45 and we are asked to find if element 32 exists in the array A or not. If it exists, we have to return index of 32. If it does not exist, we have to return minus 1. In the above array, indexing starts from 0 to n minus 1. So, for the above array, the indexes will be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let us see how will we solve this question. One very naive and rudimentary way to solve this question is that we can run a loop from index 0 to index n minus 1. At every iteration of the loop, we compare the current index element with the element that we have to find. If they match, we return the index, else we move to the next iteration. How will we implement this in code? It is quite simple. We can run a for loop from i equals to 0 to n minus 1, where n is the length of array a. At each iteration, I see if array i equals to the element we have to find. If it is equal, we can just return the index i. There is a possible scenario that this particular return statement never executes. When will this happen? Yes, this will happen if the element is not present in the array. In that case, we will complete all the iterations and then we can finally return minus 1 indicating the element was not found. What is the time complexity of this algorithm? It is clear to see that this for loop executes for n iterations, making this an order of n algorithm. Thus, it has a linear time complexity. Let us see if we can improve if the given array is sorted. Let me redraw the array again. Our array was 1, 8, 21, 32, 45. It is easy to see that this given array is sorted. Suppose, like previous, we have to find if 32 exists in the array or not. Let us see how sorting allows us to make better decisions about if 32 will exist in the array or not. Suppose, I tell you that hey, the element at index 1 of this array is 8. Can you tell me on which side of index 1 will the element 32 lie? Yes, as the array is sorted, 32 will lie on the right side of element 8. Thus, we can be sure that if 32 exists in the array, it will be from index 2 to index 4. Great, this is the intuition behind bind research. In bind research, at every step, we try to reduce the answer space. of where the element might be present. At every iteration, what do you think is the best choice to reduce the answer space by? Correct. It is the best choice that if, it, if at every iteration we are able to at most reduce it by n by 2. 
that is reduce the size of the next answer space by at least half of what the answer space was previously. So, how many number of iterations will it take to find the element? Initially, the size of the array will be n. In the next iteration, it will become n by 2, then n by 4, and so on, till it becomes n by 2 to the power k, which should be equal to 1. This particular element will either be the element that we have to find, or it will indicate that the element that we were trying to find is not present in the array. What is this value of k? Let us say n by 2 to the power k equals to 1. This means 2 to the power k is equal to n and k is equal to log n to the base 2. Thus, log n to the base 2 iterations will be needed to come to the subarray size of space 1, where we can directly determine if the element is present or not. Thus, the time complexity of fine research will be logarithmic. Let us try run on how this algorithm works. Let me draw the array again. It is equal to 1, 8, 21, 32, 45. Initially, as the element 32 can be present anywhere in the array, we can maintain two pointers that indicate the subarray or the part of the array that is currently under consideration. Initially, the low pointer will be 0, that will be the start of the array, and the high pointer will be n minus 1, which in this case is 4. At every iteration, we calculate the middle of the current array by the formula low plus high minus low by 2. And if it turns out to be a decimal, we can take a floor of it. So, this will be 0 plus 4 minus 0 by 2, which is equal to 2. Now, we go to the second index of the array. We find that the array 2 is equal to 21. We compare this 21 with the element that we have to find. We see that 21 is less than 32. What does this tell us about where will 32 exist in our array? You are correct. If it exists, it will exist to the right side of the element 21. We can make this change by changing our low pointer to mid plus 1. Thus, low will be equal to previous mid plus 1, which is 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. Our high pointer remains the same, which is equal to 4. Again, we calculate the mid by the same formula. Thus, it comes out to be 3 plus 4 minus 3 by 2, which is equal to 3. Now, we go to the third index of the array we find that array 3 is equal to 32. Again, we compare it with the element that we had to find. We see that 32 is equal to the element that we had to find itself. What does this mean? This means that we have found the element. So, we can return the index of where that element was present, which is mid. So, we can just return mid. Great. Let us try run this algorithm for another example where the element that we had to find does not exist in the array. Again, let us rewrite the array. Suppose this time we want to find if an element 20 exists in the array or not. Clearly, 
as string t is not present in the array a, our algorithm should return minus 1. Let us see how binary search handles this condition. In the very first case, low will be equal to 0 and high will be equal to 4. When we calculate mid, it is going to come out as 0 plus 4 minus 0 by 2, which is 2. We compare the element at index 2 with the element that we had to find. We see that array 2 is equal to 21 and this is greater than 20. Now, what can we say about where the element 20 exists in the array? It means that it, if it exists, it will be on left. We can make this change by this time rather than updating low, we will update high to mid minus 1. So, the next high will be equal to previous mid minus 1. Again, we calculate mid and it will be 0 plus 1 minus 0 by 2, which is equal to 0. Now, we go to the 0th index of the array. We find that array 0 equals to 1. Again, okay, when we compare it to 20, we find 1 is less than 20. This means now we have to go right. This time, we will update low to previous mid plus 1. So, the new low will be 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. Our high won't change this time. So, high will be equal to 1. When we calculate mid, it will be equal to 1 plus 1 minus 1 by 2, which is 1. We go to the first index of the array. We find that array 1 is equal to 8. This is also less than 20, which means we have to go right. Okay, we will update our low to previous mid plus 1, which is equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. Our high will remain same. But this time, we find that our low is greater than high. What does this mean? This means that there is no space where the answer might exist now, as our low is somewhere ahead then height. This means we have exhausted our answer space and the element does not exist in the array. In this case, we can just return minus 1, which indicates that the element is not found. Let us now implement the above algorithm via a code. Let us name the function binary search that returns the index of the element that we were to find. The parameters to this function will be the array itself and the element that we have to find. Let us say n represents the size of the array. Initially, low pointer will be 0 and high pointer will be n minus 1. Now, while low is less than equal to high, we will calculate mid by the formula low plus high minus low by 2. Here, we assume that this division is integer division. That means this will return an integer and not a float. Now, we check the element at the mid index with the element that we have to find. What are the three possible cases? The very first case is that array mid is less than the element that we have to find. So, if array mid is less than the element we have to find, this indicates the condition where we have to go to the right side. Thus, we will update low to mid plus 1. What are the other cases? The other case is where array mid is greater than the two find element.
this time rather than going going right we have to go left so we will update high to mid minus 1 what is the remaining case correct the remaining case is when we have found the element in that case we can just return mid as mid will be the index of the element that we were supposed to find there is one scenario when the low gets greater than high in that case we will come out of this while loop and in that case we can just return minus 1 isn't it simple while the algorithm is quite simple to implement many people tend to do some small mistakes which might lead to some errors let me go through them so that you don't do those mistakes while implementing the algorithm yourself the very first mistake that people tend to do is they don't update the low and high pointers correctly if you don't update low to mid plus 1 and high to mid minus 1 when in the while condition you are choosing while low is less than equal to high you might end up with infinite loops this will make your program run forever and thus your program will not execute correctly make sure you don't do such things another common error is that people calculate mid in another fashion which is mid equals to low plus high by 2. Well, this is technically not incorrect, but when low and high are very big integers, when low and high are very big integers, this can lead to integer overflow. So, it is always a better idea to use low plus high minus low by 2 rather than low plus high by 2. Great. So, make sure you ensure you update low and high correctly and use the correct formula to calculate mid. Now, let us see one interesting thing. When we drew the above array, we saw that array elements were always increasing. So, if we had to represent the array elements with a graph, it would have been something like this. Do you think that binary search would have also worked if all the array elements were decreasing consecutively or the graph would have been something like this? Yes, it would have worked. What is one common thing between the graph 1 and the graph 2? Both these graphs are monotonically increasing. or in the case of graph 2, decreasing. In fact, we can apply binary search to calculate the answer of any function that is either monotonically increasing or decreasing within the answer space. Let us take an example of a function that is not monotonous. For example, let us take the function whose graph appears like this. This function first decreases and then increases. Thus, it is not monotonous. And you can't apply binary search on this kind of function. We will see how actually binary search allows us to calculate answers in the whole answer space in some other video. Also, one interesting thing to know is that this is not the only way to implement binary search. In fact, binary search can be implemented by recursion as well. I challenge you to try it yourself and let us know if you were able to do that in the comments. All the best.